Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard. This is an ASRock Z68 Extreme 4 Gen 3. It supports Intel second generation Sandy Bridge processors, Core i3, i5, and i7 with the 1155 socket and also has the Z68 chipset. Now the Gen 3 in this motherboard's model name stands for PCI Express 3.0, which is the new PCI Express standard that is coming out. It is not out yet, but this board does support it. Your PCI Express controller is actually integrated into your CPU. So right now, if you have a Sandy Bridge CPU, you get PCI Express 2.0 controller in there, which gives you 5.0 gigatransfers per second, 16 gigabytes per second effective bandwidth. Uh, when you are able to drop in an Ivy Bridge CPU, the new 22 man nanometer versions for the 1155 socket that are forthcoming from Intel, you will be getting a PCI Express 3.0 controller integrated there. And this motherboard has a PCI Express 3.0 quick switch interconnect that's on the board, and that will allow you to jump up to PCI Express 3.0, which gives you 8.0 gigatransfers per second, 32 gigabytes per second, effective total bandwidth for usually just for your video cards. That's, that's really only what saturates that bus. So for now, you can use your Sandy Bridge processor. You get PCIe 2.0, and once Ivy Bridge is available, you can jump up to PCIe 3.0. You might need a BIOS update. And now let's move on with an unboxing. We will go over the included accessories. You get this ASRock quick installation guide, which is really thick. I think that's mainly because there's lots of different languages in there, but there's your main installation manual. Of course, you get an input-output shield for the back of your case. It is black and is color-coded. Very nice. You also get your uh, ASRock installation disk uh, with your drivers and whatnot. It's usually best to head over to ASRock's website to download the latest version of the drivers, but it's still nice to have that. We have uh, an example here. This is uh, for the UEFI function. Uh, you can't actually boot from a hard drive that's larger than 2.2 uh, terabytes if you uh, have an old school BIOS, but since you have UEFI, you can do that, and there's some instructions on how to set that up. This is uh, some examples of the Virtue technology. Uh, if you are using the integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge processor, then uh, you, can, you can use that just fine. But you might want to add a discrete graphics card. If you do so, you might still want to use your iGPU to do uh, video encoding because it's very good at that. And Virtue technology lets you switch back and forth in order to take advantage of that. This is uh, something about the USB technology that's included, the XFast USB technology, which is... It's very fast because it's called XFast. We also have a Z68 Extreme Gen 3 software setup guide right there. We have some serial ATA cables. It looks like they're giving you four uh, serial ATA cables. Two of them have L brackets on one end. There they are. There's something mysterious in this wrapped up here. I can't even see what it is. Very curious. So I'm going to unwrap it. Oh, OK. It's an SLI bridge. This motherboard is compatible with SLI, so they give you an SLI bridge. Also compatible with Crossfire X if you're going with AMD video cards. And uh, if you get AMD video cards that are Crossfire X capable, usually you'll get your Crossfire X bridge in there. Uh, we also have a bracket here for the back of your case. That's for, uh, let's might as well talk about this at the same time. They're giving you a front panel USB 3.0 port that fits in a 3.5 inch slot. Uh, if you don't have that 3.5 inch slot, they're giving you that little bracket so you can put it in one of your PCI slots. Now this is a, a fun little thing because not only does it give you a couple USB 3.0 ports there and a 20 pin motherboard connector to give you your USB 3 on the front of the case, it's also got a little 2.5 inch uh, drive, drive bay holder thing right there. So you can uh, not only use that for your USB 3.0 but you can also mount say an SSD right there. Very handy especially if your case doesn't already have 2.5 inch drive mounts. Here are a couple of adapters, just uh, Molex to uh, serial ATA power adapters. Here is a audio cable, standard uh, eighth inch audio connect cable. Wow, this is a floppy cable. So if you're uh, going with a floppy drive, they are including a floppy cable. I'm guessing that means there are floppy ports on the board. That's going to do it for accessories. Let's move on to the motherboard itself. And here is a look at the motherboard itself. As you can see, it has a dark brown PCB. Uh, black and gray appointments throughout, as well as these solid gold caps that you can see scattered throughout those high quality caps for longer lifespan. Uh, let's first talk about the fan outs on the board because that is fairly important to system builders. We have, uh, I think we have five total apart from the CPU fan. We have a three pin there. 
We have, that's the CPU. We have another three pin right there. We have a four pin PWM fan header right there and two more fan headers right there. So there's your fan headers. And now let's talk about uh, details of the board. We'll start down here where we usually do in the bottom right. First off, as you can see here, we have surface mounted power and reset buttons. Very nice for that. There's your front panel connectors, uh, LED as well as a speaker out right there. Next to that, you can see a, your USB 3.0 port. Uh, that's a 20 pin header that you can use with that included adapter that came in the box. Next to that, we have a couple USB 2.0 outs. Next to that, we have another USB out and then also a consumer infrared header right below that. Here's a firewire out. Here's a standard infrared header. Uh, there is that floppy connector that you can connect to the floppy cable if you have a floppy drive. And then finally down here, one more uh, USB 2.0. Wait, is that USB 2.0? I'm sorry, that's a COM header. My bad. COM header right there. And then finally on the far side, we have our front panel audio connectors. Uh, moving up to this area of the board, we can see all of our PCI slots. Now let's start with the small ones. We have PCI X1, another X1, and two standard old school legacy PCI slots. We also have these three PCI Express slots. Again, these will operate at PCI Express 2.0 specs. If you're using a Sandy Bridge processor, they'll jump up to PCI Express 3.0 specs. If you drop in an Ivy Bridge processor, and again, you might need a BIOS update. We'll find out once those Ivy Bridge processors actually come out. The top one operates at 16 speed if you're using it by itself. Middle one here is wired for 8x, and the bottom one here is wired for 4x. Uh, if you're using two cards, they'll operate at 8x and 8x. If you're using three cards, it will run at 8, 8, and 4. Uh, again, this is compatible with uh, SLI or Crossfire X, and then if you're using a dual GPU card, you can run Quad SLI or Quad Crossfire X. And uh, these are triple space, so you have an extra um, space there in between these slots if you're running dual slot cards. So that's nice for added cooling, especially if you're running a couple cards. Over here, we have uh, this little cooler here, and that is for our Z68 chipset, which is under there. Speaking of our G Z68 chipset, it controls six of these serial ATA ports. I actually give you a sticker right there that's telling you, hey, if you're plugging in uh, your boot drive especially, you probably want to plug it into the Z68 controlled uh, serial ATA ports because that will give you a little bit better performance. The black ones here are serial, serial ATA revision 2. Uh, that's 3 gig gigabit per second. Uh, the gray ones here that are controlled by Z68 are SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second. Finally, we have a couple more SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second ports here. And those are controlled by a Marvell controller. That is a Marvell SE9120 controller. We also have one of those uh, controlling some eSATA ports on the back. Moving along up the board, uh, again the chassis fan header that we mentioned. Here's your 24 pin connector with a little sticker over that. Uh, next we have our memory slots. These are dual channel memory slots. You have four of them. They can support up to 8 gigabyte DIMMs. Uh, that is if you can find 8 gigabyte DIMMs. They do support DDR3 overclock speeds of up to 2133 megahertz. And again, up to 32 gigs maximum. Make sure you use them in uh, combination with at least two sticks to take advantage of that dual channel capability. Next up is our LGA 1155 socket. And you'll notice here they have uh, two holes here for your uh, mounting your cooling solution. That's because they've actually added LGA 775 um, cooling mounting holes right there as well as the standard 1155, 1156 mounting holes. So, if you have an older uh, 775 cooler that you really want to hang on to, you can use it with this board, so that is nice. Next up we have our coolers here. That's for our MOSFETs, for our VRMs. Um, very big, beefy uh, heat sinks there for those with a heat pipe running in between them. Uh, this has a 12-phase power delivery. That's 8 plus 4 uh, for your uh, voltage regulation for your CPU, so handy for overclocking in particular. Up here on the top is our 8-pin EPS power connector. You can use just the 4-pin uh, if you only have that, but you'll get better overclocking performance if you use the 8-pin. Uh, one other thing right down here is a Molex plug, and they're recommending if you're using SLI or Crossfire, so if you're using two cards, you want to plug that in to give some a little extra juice to your PCI Express slots. Finally, let's talk about our inputs and outputs on the back. 
Over here we have a couple USB 2.0 ports, PS2 port for mic or keyboard, I'm sorry, for mouse or keyboard. Uh, these are your video outs, and that is if you're using your integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor. So you have a VGA out, a DVI out, a display port out, and an HDMI out. DVI and HDMI can do up to 19, 1920 by 1200. Display port can do up to uh, 2560 by 1600. You also have a clear CMOS switch right there in the back that will also light up with an LED. Uh, a couple more USB 2.0 ports here. You also have a FireWire port. There's the aforementioned eSATA port, and that is eSATA, uh, that is SATA Revision 3 eSATA port, I should say. Uh, so you get plenty of speed plugging in an external device right there. A couple more USB 3.0 ports, gigabit LAN, and here are all your audio outs. Uh, it does support 7.1 channel HD audio out. It's a Realtek uh, chip that controls that. And you have an optical Toslink uh, digital audio out as well. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the ASRock Z68 Extreme 4 Gen 3 motherboard with the 1155 socket for Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs from Intel, as well as the Z68 chipset. I am Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video and want to see more just like it, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.